I'm JD and welcome to my channel. Um, I got my new Airy Loop, great loop. Uh, today I'm going to be working on this old Waltham pocket watch. It's of this, as you can see here, it's a it's a grade. What is the grade? There it is. There. Um, it is an old pocket watch. This is a seven jewel model, Waltham. There's a serial number, um, Seaside grade. Model 1890. This product. This was produced in 1902, which was a long time ago. I mean, the production run quantity of 10,000, and they made 993,000 of these babies. So, size 6s. Uh, there is a 15 jewel version of the same one. It's a. It's in the hunter or hunting uh, configuration, which is, means the pennant is at 90 degrees to where it would. Would, would be where the 12 o'clock position is. Um, it's a three-quarter split plate. Um, the hairspring's a Brejil hairspring. Not adjusted. It's not a railroad grade watch, but it's a pretty cool old watch. So that's the watch. Now the big surprise here is that I've already taken it apart and I made the videos first, uh, which I normally don't do, but I did. So there's the face of this watch, which is kind of really pretty. Um, and these are all the parts just laying here and I put took it apart and completely and I and I'm ready to do some work on it here it's like that so I'm ready to clean it it's not clean yet I got the balance in the infamous balance holder that I have here that I made invented I'd like to say there's the balance I know that I've got to strip the balance down because the pivot on this is broken and I need a new balance staff which I either make or or buy one or the other. It takes a while to make a balance staff. It takes five seconds to buy one. So if I can source it, I'll buy it. If I can't source it, I'll have to make it. So this is a pretty common watch, so I should be able to source the balance staff. So, so that's that. So I'm going to go about cleaning this watch. Um, and I know when I when I tried to take the power off the mainspring, uh, it was almost impossible. I think I screwed up though because there was this little tiny lever that was on the side here. Uh, it's right there, this little tiny lever that would sort of release the mainspring from its position. And I think you stick a pin or something in a hole here, but I did not know that. So what I did was I, I uh, rotticoed the escapement uh, so it was nice and safe and I let the mainspring, took off the pallet fork and let the mainspring uh, run down the, the, the uh, train, right? So I just, I ran the train, man. I'm a train runner, so. So this is the video. I hope you enjoy it. Uh, it does not include the cleaning of the watch as I've made a billion videos on how to clean a watch um, and it's not that exciting. You just, I just, I use lighter fluid which is the old way of doing it and and thank God old hippie is protecting me in this because uh, as he stated he would used lighter fluid for 30 years and didn't have an issue but somebody, some other guy, I think it was JDM who's also a pretty good watchmaker said yeah you can't use lighter fluid because blah 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 and I thought you really so anyway because they used to use lighter fluid on these watches so why not do it the, the old way right it worked so just have to not breathe it in while you're cleaning the watch anyway so enjoy the enjoy the video and I'll I'll see you later catch you on the flip side all right what do I have here this is a Luke's watch um, and it is a an old Waltham watch um, and it's it's a hunter which means that the uh, 12 o'clock position is at 90 degrees from the crown um, it seems to not want to be able to turn here at all so it could be that the watch is is a bit stiff and the mainspring is probably wound up so tight that uh, there's issues i also believe that the balance staff is broken here so i need to probably acquire another bound staff. I'm looking in here and I'm seeing that there's a screw missing or something from the uh, holding the movement in and that's not good. Uh, let me just get a close-up on this watch. Yeah, it looks as though there's a the screw here um, that's supposed to be holding the movement in is not. It's just sort of sitting there so I got to remove this somehow. Um, it's probably got seven jewels. It looks like it's pretty old. The balance staff is broken. I can see the way it's wiggling right now. So I'm just going to disassemble this watch um, and and see what I can do. 
see what I can do. But the first thing I'm going to do, should I take the face off first? Let me think. Let me think. There's the face of the watch. Um, I might want to just pop this off and remove the hands so they don't get damaged. Right, so it's the first job. I'm, I'm up here pretty close right now, so I probably should back the camera off a bit so I don't scare myself. So if you look on the edge here, you can see just a slight little groove in there, and that's where you put your uh, your knife and your case opener. Um, so I'm going to get this camera out of the way here a bit so I can do this. Just back this up a bit. And it'll still say focus because I'm cup closer to it. So you just put this in like that and then rock it back and forth just a bit until it gets a grip. And then you'll hear it snap, like crack, like it just did. And then this case, the, uh, the uh, ring, and uh, there we go. The ring comes off nicely, so there's no problem. And there's a groove here on the side here, and this groove is meant for the... Uh, for the this little jobby doohickey, I'm going to use that term again, is hooked onto here, so I guess it's called a hook, and this hooks onto the uh, to the uh, case top here, so it keeps it in place. The case looks like it's got corrosion on it. Um, the face is kind of dirty. Um, I need to remove these these hands from the watch, so that'll be the first thing I do, uh, and you know, I just want to get them out of the way so they're not causing a problem. I can smell some funky chemicals outside my door right now, so I think my wife's up to no no good. She's chemicalizing this right now. I'm gonna. So this is a bit this is a bit tight to use my Bergeron removers here. So what I do in this case, I believe I have a little piece of yellow paper. Let's see if I can find it. Come on, yellow paper, where are you? Might not be there. So. What I just, it's basically sticky paper, so I'm going to go find this paper and then cut a V in it to remove these. There, I went downstairs and I stole some paper from my wife's area here, so so when she finds out, she's going to go, hey, where's my sticky paper? There it is there. So this is just off a sticky pad. So I just want to cut a really small square here, like that. This is my dress, Mr. Dress-Up moment again here. And then from this square, this is really thin stuff. I just want to cut a V like this. It's basically, I gotta cut that thumbnail, don't I? Because that's gonna get in the way of my slide guitar. There's my V. I'm, not, I'm hoping this is deep enough. A deep V. Well, I can cut this again on the end here. And then let me just see if this is deep enough here. I want that just to tuck underneath the hands, right? I think I need my V to be a bit bigger. A bigger V. The old bigger V. The old bigger V and the V trick. There. Huge V, and I actually cut it too deep here, but I got tons of that sticky paper as long as I don't get caught. And there we go. The second hand's... The second hand is also in there, so it's kind of sneaking up on me. So there you go. So that's in there nicely. That's the V'd out like that. And then I get my hand removers, my hand removers. I got two sets. I've got these ones here that I got that are wide as heck, but I don't know if they're... Yeah, my old ones actually work a bit better than these. I thought these ones were kind of cool, but I think I got to gotta trim them down a bit on my uh, with a with a wheel, just take a little bit of stuff off them with a wheel. So, so these ones here just fit right under here nicely, and then just leverage up here, and these hands pop right off. There you go. That one flew, and I don't like when they fly because sometimes they uh, end up somewhere where I don't want them. So on my lap or something. I also take the top, this crystal here, which I'll clean up later, and and just put this crystal, just put the hands on top of the crystal so you know where they are. Um, this hand looks kind of bent. This, this is a bent hand, so that's not good. So I'm going to see if I can straighten that hand up or replace it. Um, but that's, there it is there. That was like a sideways hand on this watch. 
and um, and then the seconds hand. Luckily, it's not moving, right? Because it makes it a lot more difficult when the hand is actually moving to to remove it. But I should be able to just come in here and grab that seconds hand and pull it up. And that's on the fourth wheel of the pocket watch. So for anybody who cares at all. And again, you got to be very careful when you're removing the seconds hand because you don't want the pivot on the end to get broken. So there's not a lot of weight on that second hand, so I think I can come in without my V because you're not actually putting a lot of weight pulling up. So it's usually not an issue. You're not going to crack the. Uh, I, I sometimes work this off. There it is. So you sometimes only need one of these to do this. But I sometimes just work it off with a screwdriver. But you want to go straight up because you've got a pivot on the end of the wheel and then throw that in there. So that's so that's all they're all in there right now. Um, I'm not wearing a glove right now, but I'm gonna be watch, washing this watch as well. So there's the face, and while I've got it all nicely secured in there, I'm just gonna take a piece of rotico and and just sweep the face here carefully uh, so I can see if I can get away get any of the the dust that's there away and again while you're working the face here um, stay away from the pivot right there of the fourth wheel because you don't want to touch it interfere with it do anything that could disturb it right so you got to kind of keep yourself away from that pivot um, and just 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 be be there in in the moment right uh, and you can shape your rotico too make it into a point this rotico stuff is a, just a wonderful wonderful putty for watchmaking it's amazing <coughs> and if i look at the face right now that wasn't a covid cough it was just a cough if i look at the face right now the uh, i've had one shot so there you go so i look at the face right now and it's really good so just can see if I can get a shine on that face at all. Uh, you'll see that there, the stuff has been nicely removed from it. So that's a pretty clean face right now. So, so impressed, very impressed. The case seems to be it's a bit stiff coming down, and that that has to do with people that are opening the watch and stuff. Um, it has to have a little bit of a spring in it, but that's got basically people pulling back on the case like that and then bending the actual metal on the case right so you don't want that this is a bit stiff I'm not sure how I can resolve that but I I don't do a lot of case work right is that a joke that's a CSI joke so not a lot of case work so it's uh, not easy for me to do that so these are these screws here on the side are like little half screws um, but they have to be completely removed so well, actually they're just the watch movement's falling out because they're already halfway through. So, so now this should just come out nicely. So we just move this up a bit so I can get and then stay in focus. And I should be able to pull this back um, out of out of the way so that I can remove this because this is not lever set. So let me just close this up here and I grab it like this and like that. I definitely got to cut that thumbnail. I'll be back in a second. That's disgusting. All right, I'm back with the world's nicest thumbnail. So I, I usually hold the case like this with this hand. And then I grab the uh, crown with this hand. I'm hoping it just pops out. And you can hear it snap. And that just gives me more control over doing it. So I just use these two fingers here to push upward while I move the whole case back. So that's back out of the way. So now the watch should just fall out nicely, right? I think we'll put my glove on because that... That's a, that's a nice little cleaning on the top of that, and I don't want to mur it up. Mur it up. Mur, mur. Hang on. Oh. This is Luke's watch, man. All right, Luke, I'm going to keep really nice care of your watch here. All right, now it should just drop out like that. So there's the case. I'm going to throw that in my brand new ultrasonic cleaner. I'll show you that and just let her run. And that should get all the oil and grime and dirt out of that, and I can re-oil that later. So there's the there's the movement. Now let me look in the side, and there should be some 
really small screws in there that I that I can remove, right? And I'm gonna get in close here to, to loosen these because I want to take the face off. All right, that screw there had it was gripping, but it had no grip, so the thread was good, but it just basically was loose. So I don't think this watch has been worked on in a lot of years. I'll say a lot of years. I want to say, it's like I want to say, I think if you say I want to say, you're not really saying, you're just saying you want to say, so, which is not saying. So it's, uh, this should just come right up. It's been gum there for a thousand years. Let me see if I can get a hold of this and sort of work it out. Is that even in camera? I think it is. Let's loosen these up a little more. I want to tighten them later so they don't fall out on me. I don't think they're I think they're loose enough. Yeah, they should be loose enough. Okay, there, just go in here and then just do that. Get my fingernails in there. And I can see the uh, center wheel. So there we go. All of the... Uh, the dial feet look good on this. The face actually looks really nice now. So I'm just going to put this aside and put the face with the hands. There we go. There's the face sitting on top. The hands are on the other side. So and I'll actually just put all that in a, in a container properly in a container. So, so I'm just going to take the, um, the center wheel, the, uh, mid, the hour wheel gear off. Uh, get that aside and have a look at these are screwed in. And I'm going to take a picture of this, so this is fine here. I'll just lift that up, straight up, hopefully. I want to make sure that the uh, I don't the pinions are okay in there. I don't, I don't want to mess with those pinions. So I just want to move that straight up somehow. Maybe I can use Rodico and pull it up. What do you think? There we go. Another use of Rodico. Rodico is the amazing watchmaking stuff. I just put that part aside, put my Rodico aside, so, so I've got all of that in place and I'm going to get my cannon pinion remover and remove the cannon pinion, but before I do that I think I want to remove the balance so it's nice and safe. So let's put this in the pocket watch holder here and I'm going to refocus just so you're, you're with me. So there it's sitting in there nicely. Um, spin that around and I know that there's an issue with the pivot on this but this time instead of using my dunker tank I'm going to use this watch uh, holder so and what I'm going to do is just remove the screw here and just lightly put this on here I have to turn it the other way and then the balance should sit on the pad with any luck the balance is going to sit on that pad without any luck with 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 luck, it'll sit on the pad. Oh, and I want to hold this. It doesn't matter much now because that upper pivot is broken. As you can see, the balance is like toast. So I've got to go and order a new one or order or make one. I don't think I have time to make one because uh, we put the screw right here. Look at that, this little bowl that I made. I made this in my lathe. This whole thing was made in my lathe. And this is mock leather, so faux leather as they call it. So I just grab this. I want to my movement holder here. I should take these gloves off because they're pretty slick. And grab this like that. And then very carefully move this out of position. Like that. And then I want to put that down on the onto this jobby doohickey. And there we go. And as you can see from the angle, I'll just show it like that. Up top here you can see the balance is resting very nicely on these little pads here. It's all safe and then I cut the drop through here so that the pivots are safe on there too. But I know the pivots are broken so I've got to strip this strip this down. But I'll just put this aside again. And now I've got this kind of open. I can have a quick look at and see if there's any damage in here at all. And it actually looks it looks like the uh, pallet fork is snapping back and forth. So that's a good sign. That means there's power in the mainspring. 
going all the way over to here but because the balance is, is kind of the balance staff is toast uh, aka broken um, then it's not allowing it to uh, to to snap that pallet fork back and forth I do want to take a picture of this so as I squeeze this the reason I took the balance off is that when I put this back in the movement holder I don't want the balance to be part of the game here so you, you can very easily crush that balance by putting this into a movement holder and you don't want to do that so that that's causing problems as well as I put this into this nice number 58 Myers movement holder I shake it just a little tiny bit when I do that just a bit <clears throat> not enough to scratch anything so nothing is being scratched it's just being shaken a bit so so that is the technique so I could speak maybe I should speak in French for Luke okay? so so you can see what I'm doing doing I can speak with a French accent so I'm going to want to remove the uh, cannon pinion here on the top so that the center wheel can come out so let me grab my cannon pinion remover so in all the tools I have, I've got this tool as well, which is a hand remover. So you just put that over the hands, you move it in like that, and you go, and this pulls the hands up. So that's a kind of a neat tool. I got this uh, probably a year ago, and it's in mint condition. So this is a pretty neat tool. So, But the Canon Pinion Remover tool is this one here. So and it's got, as I've said before, it's got these really nice jaws here. Um, and you just put it over the top of the cannon pinion like so and usually when you do this you're, you pull up and the cannon pinion comes right off look at that I'm gonna just drop it on the movement here and there it is so that's the cannon pinion right there so you don't want to have to go find another cannon pinion and this tool allows me to pull that cannon pinion straight up which again you won't have this uh, the the uh, the uh, shaft of the center wheel um, basically uh, causing any issues. The shaft won't bend of the center wheel, so I wasn't actually sure what to say. I don't have a script when I'm chatting about this stuff. Also, these are the this is an old watch, so you can actually move the banking pins by by adjusting this here. But you do not want to play with banking pins on a watch unless your watch is totally not working properly, and then you got to do a lot of research and read again before you f f play with the banking pins. I almost said fart. I almost said fart. Not sure whether fart is a word that YouTube lets you say. So, so now I want to take power off of this watch. I also want to remove these screws too because they're not they're of no use. I'm going to have to replace this screw because all it is is a, a screwed up head of a screw. So this screw here is not no longer of any value. Um, so I'll just replace this screw with a brand new one. I've got uh, boatloads of vintage screws that I'll go hunting for with the right thread and, and replace this one. But I'm just trying to grab this screw on the top and work it out with my tweezers. And at some point, it'll, at some point, it'll give up. It will give up. I know it will. So there we go. Spin that around until it gives up. I should be able to feel when it's out of position. So there we go. That's done. And I just lay that over there. And then this screw does have thread left in it. Not a lot, but still some. So I can get in here like that and remove this screw here very carefully. Like that. Now I've got to remove the plates, but before you remove the plates, as I said before, there's still power on the mainspring. So you want to take the power off the mainspring. So with this watch here, I'm trying to look and see how I take the power off this mainspring. And I think it's this little, the little button on the side here, and I think that's the one to use. This is a very old watch, so I tend to work on watches that are not that new, but newer than this, usually. So. I think what I do here is put a little bit of pressure on the spring here and when you push in it's in the winding position so I want that to be in the winding position but I need a free hand to push this this in here while I do that so and I got I got to do that in the standing up position I'm not sure whether I can do that with this movement holder will it let me do that ah, look at that that's kind of cool so there we go. So I've got this little 
this this here winding and then I gotta push this down I believe so let's just see if I can do this does this make any sense at all so this is just moving the hands um, yeah it was working fine before just move that over here there we go somehow gravity had changed its position so not sure what that's all about and then I gotta I think I gotta push this inward yeah there we go so I take that I can't really show you this I guess you get everything out of the way here but you just move the camera around here and take a side shot there we go so this thing I'm a jobby doohickey here get a screwdriver instead of my tweezers this thing right here you've got to push down on that there while you hold hold this and that will release the pressure on this Let's see if I can do this again of course I can't do it when you guys are watching me Yeah, I gotta sit it up again and do it. I think I gotta it's gotta be in the right position. Like that. And then like this. Did I press it down or did I move it sideways? I can't remember. Alright, I'm gonna go to camera because I'm I got the camera right next to my cheek right now. It's kind of stupid. Looks like it's down now. But it doesn't want to seem to release the mainspring. No, nope, I have to fart around with that. I need to release pressure from the mainspring by pressing that particular device. So let's readjust the camera here again. These old watches of personality. I really don't want to pop the mainspring because it's uh, if it's reusable, that's great. I may have to get another mainspring for it. Yeah, there's still pressure on the mainspring here. So another thing I could very bravely do is take out the pallet fork and let it spin. What do you think? That could cause problems on the pivot. So if it just went wild. I'd rather just press that and have it have done with it. Don't know. Je ne know pas. While I'm here, I'm going to tighten the uh, tighten the screws for the dial so I don't lose them. Because I don't want to lose them. That's why. Might as well do that while I'm looking at them. So that one's tightened. This one needs to be tightened. These are so easy to lose, and then you got to go hunting for dial screws. And just move that in and tighten it a bit. Release the pressure from the mainspring. Release the pressure on the down side. I think that's a song. I know that this is an old mechanism, so it's. I know there's a way of doing that, and. I know you press down on this, but if it's already pressed down now, it doesn't seem to want to do anything, so... The worst case scenario is I play with this... Uh, I play with it until I get it... Until I get the... Uh, this hook to release. There's a hook inside that needs to release, right, so... What I don't want to do is break the gears. I don't want to break the gears. All right, I'm going to cut away and play with this and see if I can fix it. So I'm not sure if this is a solution or not, but what I'm going to do is put a very, very small piece of Rodico in here. And just to prevent the escapement from spinning. And that will just grab, as if the escapement tries to spin, that will just grab it. It's a very small piece of Rodico. Then I'm going to remove the pallet fork and see if I can let this run out. 
So I don't like doing that, but I don't think I have a choice because I cannot remove, I can't take the pressure off the mainspring. Somebody wound the crap out of it, so it's no longer it's no longer in a position where I can remove the pressure. So as people watch this video, you can go, wow, hey, JD, you should have done this. But this is an old movement with an old mechanism to do that with. So, so as you can see, the pallet fork is not going anywhere because I put that little tiny piece of radica in there. Get this out of the way, and then grab the pallet fork and take it out of the thing and put it in a safe position here. There we go. Now, as I remove this, I want to. I'm going to have my finger on the center wheel so I can ride this down nicely because I think this will spin like crazy. You're all watching this, I hope, because this is exciting stuff. Oh, look at it go. I'm controlling it a bit with my finger here so I can put a little tension on that on the uh, center wheel so that I don't start a fire with the pivots spinning like crazy. Let's keep riding this down here. I'm just peep, peeping a little tiny bit of tension on that center wheel. Just a just tiny bit of pressure on the center wheel with my finger. And any acid from my finger will get removed from the in the wash anyway. So I'm not too concerned with that. But it's just this thing is running down, this could, could take a while. I think I'll stop it for a second. I'll stop it for a second. I want to add a little bit of oil to it so I, if the pivots are getting a bit hot or whatever, I'm not ruining anything. So I'm just going to put a bit of oil on the top here. So. And that's just protection. So I'm not sure whether I'm, this is absolutely needed, but I, I, sh I don't want it to uh, burn out, basically, right? So and I'm going to put a little oil on the other side, too. There, I oiled both sides now so that it won't wear out any that won't wear out the holes or the pivots when I'm doing this. So. And I'll start again with the controlled rundown of this watch. The mainspring has around I think seven turns on it. So it takes a bit of while, a little bit of time to do what I'm doing. But it seems to be the only way I have to uh, to be able to take the pressure off of this. It's getting a little bit easier now, which means I'm getting to the end here. I think it was a smart idea to put a bit of oil on this. To there, so it's not going super crazy anymore. It's a bit crazy. It was fully powered. This the the, uh, the wheel was spinning like crazy. So now it's getting to the end of it. Put that radico back. You can hear the uh, mainspring letting go on the inside, right? So there we go. And it should stop in a second, and then I can start disassembling the uh, the watch. So there we go. It's almost done. And. I'm gonna, as you can see it's still spinning just a bit. It's amazing how fast this thing spins though. Yeah, it's still spinning. All you can see is a blur 
of the uh, escapement going around in a circle. So it's almost stopped though. Just, I know that the, uh, the tension is just killing you, waiting for this thing to stop. So there we go, you can see, so it's like the wheel on the Beverly Hillbillies when you used to see the camera. So I'm going to push this a little beyond where it wants to go, which takes any residual pressure off that mainspring. So just to make sure it doesn't want to turn any more than it's turning. There we go. That's good enough. So it's pushing it back and forth and it seems to be stopping in each direction, which means it means there's no more pressure on the mainspring. So then I should be able to just remove this plate here, pull it up, and I've got myself uh, the movement. All right, let me just get in close here and remove these screws. Just to make sure I get the right size screwdriver for this. Yeah, that's perfect. Again, get my pick here, my rot, my. Uh, my peg wood here. I think they they call it pegging out the holes. So pegging out the holes with peg wood. So there's a screw one and screw two coming out here. And you know why it costs some money to get these things clean because it's not not easy. This isn't your average. Seiko movement where you just come up to it, take it apart, and then go away. So it takes some TLC to do this properly. And if you don't do it properly, you're going to end up ruining it. So I'll just lift this straight up here because I don't want these any of the pivots to get involved. So there it is. So that's there's the movement on the inside. Um, and like I always do, I just take a picture of this in case there's some crazy stuff going on here. That way I can refer back to the photo and take some a picture of the keyless mechanism too. So I can refer back to that after. And I can remove these and remove these screws first before I lift the mechanism out. Get up close. I should be using my watchmaker's bench that I have that's really good. That would be a lot better. Because right now my, my body's not at the right angle, I don't think. I'm hunched over a bit. So. Which I don't think helps. doesn't help if your knees are higher than your hips. So I'm not too worried about the pivot here because it's a big mainspring. So i just take that out here. I'll have to check the screw sizes over here too after to make sure I... They're all good, and there isn't some strange stuff going on. Um, lift that plate out, and I can take out the center wheel. I should be able to just lift the center wheel straight up. There we go. One, remove this thing away. So it's one, and then two, should come straight up. Two, this is the intermediate wheel. And three, this is the wheel with the seconds hand. You gotta be very careful with that. I usually lay that on the pinion down. Here's the incredible spinning escapement. And then the mainspring, like that. And there's this little jobby doohickey that was causing me not to be able to uh, to take the pressure off the mainspring. Uh, is that right? I think that's it. Um, Yeah, I think that is it. So, so the question is, what the heck was this for? I'm not quite sure. Anyway, I'm going to have to have a look at that. I think I had to put a pin through the hole here, like that, to reduce the pressure on the mainspring while holding, holding all this in. So, we shall see. So I'll, I'll take a photo of this because I want to be able to reassemble that. And again, with these old parts, I sometimes I don't want to take all this stuff out. The only reason 
for that is that if this is like an 18 something watch and I've got a spring right here and it's in here I'm very concerned about this losing this spring or breaking this spring very very difficult to replace that so I often will wa just wash this watch the way it is um, I'll t I can take this out here probably but I can wash wash the watch the way it is so I have no fear of, of, of this spring going anywhere so if you look at the way the mechanism works I'll just show you this quickly here spin this around and grab it a bit and, and I, if I if you see this here right that's the way the mechanism works in the watch like that so you get a plunger there so my concern would be this spring right there so I think I'm not sure whether I should remove that or not because it uh, and the arm here just moves around that pawl right so that's worth a video because they uh, because it seems it's a unique way of this working so which I need to I think I want to videotape that just to make sure I've got a a record of that there we go I just took a quick little video of that so I can do that fix that later so let's so let's be brave here take this apart and hopefully nothing goes flame I'm gonna put a piece of Rodico down here I think to make sure the spring doesn't go anywhere I know this is going to be a pain in the Batinsky to put back together so that's what it looks like there so time for one more picture here Let's take a quick shot of that so I can when I put it back together I just refer to this picture and I think I can just move this straight up but you can see how this is attached here like that just put that over where the other mechanisms are this is over here like this and then this spring here as you can see that if you lose that you got trouble so because you'd have to make another one probably so I'm actually put that spring over there too and then I can just lift this straight up and this has got a uh, oh yeah this has got a thing going through here a pole going through there and I'm going to take another picture of that because I don't like I don't want to forget that either so this just comes straight up out like that I think it doesn't want to come out straight out it's because the end of it is flat this end here is flat so it's got to go back flat and that does not come out of that hole there, which is interesting. So but this can come straight back probably. I don't know. This is weird. It's very possible that the screw on the other side the screw on the other side is holding that in place, right? So let me just look at that really quickly, because that's gonna be a mystery when I put it back together again. Uh, just turn that around and yeah there's a screw right here that's holding that in place um, so if I remove these two screws here yeah okay I get it now so I got a, another picture this is going to be fun man put this back together those Waltham guys are crazy. So, was this a Waltham? I think this was a Waltham. Break my screwdriver on this. All 
I may leave this where it is because I don't want to break the screwdriver. I don't want to break the head off of this, the screw head off of this because that would be a disaster. Very, very concerned. So I'm going to wash this in place, um, which is very possible with the lighter fluid. You just let, got to let it dry for a long time, and then uh, you're good after that. So and this this little thing here makes no sense. This little uh, bar here, I'm not sure what its purpose is. Other than being a pain in the butt, which it was. I don't believe it has a purpose. It's sprung as well. Eh? It ha also has a little bit of a leaf spring on it, so that bar. The bar also has a bend on it, which means it's sprung. But I'm just going to push that back into place as well. That is something I don't want to play with. All right, fine. It's good like that, no problem. And that can be washed like that without an issue. Um, again, I'm just concerned about breaking the spring and, and taking the head off the screw here, so I can I can clean that with lighter fluid and I can oil it up again without a problem so it, it, will, it will bring it back to spec it looks pretty clean anyway so I normally like taking all this out but I really don't want to break the head off of the screw if that happens you've got a whole other problem so my recommendation with these vintage watches sometimes I just wash this in place and you've got no issue right so so there we go if I just shift over here you can see all the parts laying there um, I think I'll just call this disassembly and then I'll make the video for this one um, and we'll go from there. Um, and then I'm gonna, I'm gonna wash this, wash these parts in lighter fluid. I think I've shown how to do that a million times. So I just put lighter fluid in this jar, and one at a time I wash these parts with the brush, um, with lighter fluid, and put them back on, on uh, watch paper, and away we go. So that's the disassembly of this vintage, what is it, what is it, Waltham? Very vintage Waltham. I should look up the numbers on this thing.